Hey, how you doing this week? Welcome back to the studio again. I'm James Hockley, also known as Pixel Freak or Funk Droid, and uh, I'm here for my weekly um, studio hangout where we're going to create a track from scratch. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tell all your mates about it. Share it all across Twitter, share it all across Facebook, wherever you want to go with it. Just share it all about. It'd be fantastic. Get yourselves over to the Mo2Records.com website and uh, Get yourself signed up over there for the mailing list as well. You're to get the parts for tonight's track. Uh, every week I give the parts away um, for free. Um, and you'll get a load of other stuff and bits and pieces as well. So, um, yeah, welcome back. Um, so we've got another... I'm trying to bear the, the, uh, the, the camera trick again this week. So we've got another new camera view for you to look at. It's going to change it over now for you so you can see what I'm going to get. We've got this view here, which shows you my hands and what we're doing over here. So I can press things, I can play things. We can hit play on different bits and pieces. I haven't got any sounds on here yet at the moment, but you'll be able to see actually what I'm doing um, from my hands there, as well as the other views, which you've got the screen, obviously, with the, with the uh, keyboard view there, and also the view you've got there but with my screen in there as well so uh, hopefully that's gonna give everybody a bit more insight into what's going on here the whole thing this is, is about getting you guys in as close as possible to the studio um, uh, when I was learning uh, in studios I was uh, I learned so much from from being actually in the room with the people I was working with and um, that's what I'm trying to get over the internet by doing these hangouts. So uh, anyway, hit that subscribe button, share that subscribe, share the channel all over everywhere for us. Uh, that'd be fantastic. Get yourselves over to motorecords.com. Get signed up for the main list. We're going to crack on with the track right now. So I'm going to flick you to probably this view to start with. All right. So I'm just going to load some sounds in for the moment. I'm going to do it on the MPC itself because I always use the MPC as an actual unit itself but you can see what basically what I'm doing on the screen let me just get you the uh, LCD window up here as well so you actually see what I'm seeing on my LCD screen here as well so we're going to go through some of my sounds, my standard sounds I have here uh, I'm just going to go program I'm going to go and load up the no, no, I'm going to go straight forward uh, house track I think tonight so you can go load up a straight forward 909 and my sound drivers have gone already. Good, good, good old Akai sound drivers. I have to do this every week. Just flick the sound driver over and flick it back. You'll see me probably have to do that a couple of times tonight. Let's move him out of the way and do hit that button there. Okay. Okay, there we go. Brilliant. All right, so. It's going to have a straightforward 909 kit. We're going to crack on straight in doing a straight, nice, beautiful house 909 style beat. So I'm going to go back to the main window there. And let's put it on to, so 123 this week. See how that's going to sound. All right, I'm going to go and put that in now. We'll always start with a two bar pattern, which we've got on here on the screen. You can see one, two bars on there. The NPC always starts like that. Um, we're going to go into record. you over to this screen now like that. There we go. you can see what I'm doing now so I'm just flicking in and out of let's mute the CZ off that's a bit noisy um, flicking in and out of overdub mode that's because then I can undo each part as I'm going along um, so I'm gonna go overdub now and put a snare drum in So I can undo that now because I'm on the wrong beats. Okay, let's start. If I hadn't taken it out of overdub mode, it would have deleted all the kick drums as well for me. Okay, so we're going to use no repeat button. Okay, let's do some of that.
So maybe we'll do a... Yeah, let's have some of that on there. Now what I'll do is I'll build up the whole beat that I'm going to have on the track, get the whole groove running, um, and then when we arrange it, I'll probably break it down and, and do different bits and pieces when we actually do the arrangement and mix it. Uh, I'm just going to build the whole thing up in over these two bars, um, and uh, then I can mute individual pads on and off and all that kind of stuff. Put some rim shot in there. Do that, do that again. That's better. So I'm going to go into program edit now, actually program mix now, and I'm just going to mix. So that's actually just put over on the q link so you can see the red lights have lit up there now. Uh, you've actually got um, all the different levels for uh, the individual sounds, each pad. So I've got each pad there, you can see them light up on the screen. Um, I hope you can see them light up on the screen, maybe I'll just move that little bit up a bit here. Let's just move him up. Oh, a bit over there. Hold on two seconds. Let me just move him around a bit. You can see him. Let's try that. Is that better? There we go. That's better. All right. So, um, yeah. So now I've got the uh, cue links on here so I can do the volumes of each sound. And those there as well. So when I play now, nothing's coming out. So I'm going to start mixing it in. Do a little rough mix of it. It's going to be quite raw, this track, I think. If I want to pan it, just flick the pan screen. Pan it left and right. Hoping you can pick that up on there. Okay. And back to levels. I can also do is to go to the insert tab on here and I can actually insert effects on each one of the pads. So I can go to the clap there and then I'm just going to put in a auto pan, auto pan a sync there and then when I press this little red button here on the screen the uh, the actual plugin window opens up. It's a bit too harsh for that, so I'm just going to go back, close that, and go back and just choose the normal auto panner, and then we'll try it with that one instead. It just doesn't this this same thing. It just doesn't synchronise to the beat. That's all. Okay. 
and then close the, make it not quite so stereo by just bringing the dry wet mix down. It's better. So we can actually switch it on and off. Yeah, nice, okay. <clears throat> I think we might do the same thing for the for the uh, for the rim shot. So we just open that up there. Make that a bit wider. Okay, let's just save that off now. So, do the usual thing of going to my mobile audio drive, Pro Tools sessions, me, and where's my Pixel Freak folder? That's where I'm putting everything at the moment. All the rest of the Hangouts are in there. New folder, Hangout 9. Nine Hangouts now. Bad. Hang up nine. I save that off there. Brilliant. All right. So we got our beat now. Go back to the main screen. Now I've got a little pattern that I've got running on the JPO8, which is just sitting over here. You can just see it in the corner of the screen now. Um, so I've got a pattern running on here. I think it's one of the patterns it came with actually, but it's I've just modified it by taking a couple of the little steps out. So you can play with that and play with the cutoff on it. Now, if I want to synchronize that to the MPC, I've got to just go in. Um, let me just switch the screen back over here to a bigger one here. That one there. So, if I want to, if I want to synchronize that uh, sequence, I've got to just send a sync signal out. So, I'm going to go to preferences inside uh, MPC, go to sync, and I've got to choose where I want to send the MIDI clock to. So, I'm going to send the MIDI clock to uh, MX3 USB 3 which is what this is coming in here so this is actually wired straight in I'm gonna flip you back cameras again that's wired straight in on a USB cable directly into my MX1 mixer um, on the one of the Aerolink cables um, so if I flip back here um, that means that if I send MIDI clock to MX1 USB 3 it should receive sync signal. So if I press play on here, and it's not. Why is it not receiving that then? It's not receiving the signal. Of course it's not, because that would be far too simple and easy if it was to do that, wouldn't it? Straight off. That would look so slick if I'd have done that. Send MIDI clock. USB 3, try USB 3 control then, okay. No, that was working perfectly earlier on, that's um, quite embarrassing, but we'll try it again. So that's sending it to there. Sending MIDI clock to USB 3. Okay, in that case, then we won't worry about using that tonight because I can't reset, I can't sync that up to it. Just make double sure I'm not being silly here and not sending that to the wrong thing. Maybe MX1, USB. Three control. 
that's just that should be that it's coming in isn't it Not to worry then, we won't worry about that for tonight. We'll use that for next week or something when I've figured it out why that's not sending that. Okay. So let's go down the baseline then. Let's not worry about that too much. Let's just go up to um Let's just change the track on uh on the MPC so we're not getting MIDI sent to the drum kit. So I'm gonna go and change that to a MIDI track. That'll do. Yeah, I'm just going to program my sound on this. That's quite nice. Let's just change that sound a little bit. Bring the resonance down a bit. So, if you can see up on the screen there, I've got, this is playing, actually playing MIDI coming in. There's a little great red light flashing on there, I'm not sure you can actually make that out on that screen there, but the little red light is flashing, so the, the, the micro brute is feeding MIDI into the MPC, which is great because that's what we want it to do. So I'm just going to record the MIDI notes for that pattern into this, uh, into the sequencer. Um, and um, we'll see how we get on. So I'm going to go into record again. And there we go. So the notes are now in there, but they're not playing. You can hear they're not actually playing yet because I haven't told the NPC where to send them. Now, uh, I've got four different ports on here that I can send to. And again, you just have to go into preferences. We just flip back to the screen again here so you can see that a bit better. <clears throat> so we've got preferences, um, MIDI, and then you choose here what you want to send to. So we're going to send port A is now going to go to Microbrew. Okay, so I want to play it now. Now I'm going to go and just add a very quick um, time correct to that drum part first before we do this so I can actually get a little bit of a groove running. So we've got to pop down to this track here, press um, time correct, um, and then we're just going to swing it 
by 52. Just try that there. And I'm going to time correct the um, MIDI by the same. Tone, which you've on the overtone, which is the, the base of it basically off there, and I've brought the pulse width up. So we're only actually using, or should you? So we're using the, the triangle wave, the square wave, and the overtone, which is the, the there's like a the sub bass. Um, so I can play along with that. I can bring in this, the triangle wave, which has got a metalizer on it, which is up a bit. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool to me. So I'm going to go and record that now. Now, as you know, if you've watched the, any of the other uh, Hangouts, I've actually got um, the outputs of the MX-1 hooked straight into the inputs of the MPC because I use the MPC as a completely separate, like a separate instrument. So the outputs of the MPC run into the MX-1. Then I've got the auxiliary output from the MX-1 feeding into the inputs of the MPC. So you'll see if I go into sample um, record... You should see that when I press play and then turn the input gain up, which I'm not sure you can see from this camera here, it's probably just out of shot, but on the screen you'll see the levels start going up. And the sound will go a little bit weird because it's now playing through the NPC as well, so I'm going to bring it down on the mixer. Okay. So, um, we can now record that. So I've got a record button um, on the edge of the screen here. So I'm going to press with the F6 button on the actual hardware. So I'm going to press play on the sequencer and it's going to record the bass line coming in from the micro brute into the MPC. So we're just going to go record and then press play. I'm going to do that again because I caught the next note of the next loop on it. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just do it again. There we go. So now I've got that. Sample edit mode. And zoom in a bit there and just bring the front end in. I'm gonna bring it right in on the button there and then bring the other end in all using the Q-Link controls just like you would do on a normal one the only thing I do is I use the computer screen because as you can see if I put it on what's on the end of the sample on the LCD screen I've actually chopped the end off of it on the computer screen because it's obviously higher resolution on the computer so I can actually just bring it in like that perfect so we're going to process that and I'm going to discard the ends so we just got a straightforward sample like that perfect and I'm just going to move that up to slightly and just rename that here to Micro Brute Base. 
And we're just going to trigger that back in as a, as a loop, basically, from the um, main screen. I'm going to obviously mute this track now because this is playing the MIDI back to the micro brute, which we don't want to hear anymore. Um, I so I'm going to go up to another track, but I don't want to have a MIDI track here, so I'm going to make a new program. New, and we're going to click the drum program. So I just want to have it with a pad on it, and then we can either go into program edit samples and then use a Q link to find the sample. It's going to be at the end. There we go. Uh, and I've put it on the wrong pad, so I'm going to put it on the first pad, pad one. Now, I don't want to have it triggering all the way through like that, so I'm going to turn it off of one shot, making it no tone, and then go back a page and just give it a bit of amp. Release, I want to let go of it. I can go if I wanted to do that I'm not going to do that because it doesn't sound very good but you get the idea so I'm just going to go and record that in now and let's put that pad in there Now you can see it's lighting up this pad because that pad is playing the sub the, the actual bass line now. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Um cool. Um let's go and I'm going to actually I'm just going to use a plugin next we're going to get a plugin run to run so I'm going to go up the track and I'm going to create a new program again but this time it's going to be a plugin program and the plugin I'm going to choose is going to be let's get it proper house music let's do ABL 3 just give it a save okay so for some reason you can't open the the plugin window for uh, um, a instrument plugin I'm quite sure why you can open everything else from the hardware but you can't open the instrument plugin which is all found that a bit weird Anyway, um, it does map the the uh, controls onto onto the Q links. Um, now for this, this little fella here, so this is obviously a a, a three hundred three. So. I'm going to uh, just program in a pattern here. We got auto advance on. No, we haven't. Have we. We're going to go through and put some. Notes in here and just see what that sounds like. I'm going to solo this track. Okay, so that's cool. It's not cool, it sounds awful, but we're going to just go over and reset that. So, okay, let's just. Oh, pattern. 
Okay, let's just go and stick this in, see what this sounds like. Okay, let's see what that sounds like with the rest of it. Okay, so let's play through some of these. the wrong sort of one oh, that was I reckon was number two was it number two or number three one of the two Uh, banks, banks and patterns we've got here. Okay. for something to give us a bit of uh,
Let's try that one. The press program edit on, on the NPC actually maps. So what we're doing is I'm just shifting the pattern along with these these two uh, these arrow keys over here. If you can see that on on the actual screen, then maybe we should flick back to this different screen again here. So I'm actually just uh, I'm just flicking around uh, these four buttons here. That's shifting the pattern across the 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 beat basically, um, and then I'm using the 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 MPC uh, Q-Link controls, which are mapped down here to all the different controls so I can um, play the instrument basically So that's that's kind of what I'm doing with that there. Um, it's uh, quite easy to get a good groove doing that because you can just load the pattern in and then you can just you, you just kind of modify the pattern um, for your for your own use really. So all I've done there is I've loaded one of the preset patterns in, but then I've shifted the groove across, I've changed the key of it, and shifted the groove across uh, across the grid to make it fit and give it a good uh, um, a good groove. Um, with the beat that I've got here, so that's going to do for that track, I think. So uh, we can leave it like in that setting there for the moment, and come back to the main. Okay, and then we're going to use um, the D5. Not that sound on the D5 though, I'm going to go and find a different sound. Um, let me just flick you to this view here. 
Can you see me on the D5 down there? You can't. Let me just tweak the camera slightly there. there that'll do okay so I'm gonna find a some string sound on here mode, performance mode uh, strings four and just uh, in the key transpose back up again so I was doing the other day Get a very late eighties, nineties sounding string sound, which is so. Let's just try playing that at the top and see what happens now with that. Okay, that sounds great, but we're going to need to have um, a four bar loop for that. So, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to just extend this loop um, that we've got. So, obviously, there's still only two bars at the moment, so I need to press sequence edit um, number three and then merge. And now I've got four bars, as you can see here on there and you can see on the screen now I don't know if you can actually see that because we've got that across there it's actually doubled the length but it's actually doubled all of the sequencing for me as well so it's the same thing it's just like copying the the um uh it's just copying the the region across on on like cubase or or, or in 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 logical pro tools it's just copying that region across to extend it twice but because I'm inside the MPC which is the main sequence that I'm using to write on because it's faster or I find it faster anyway that's that's how I've just done it there um, I need to just create another program here as well for it so we're going to go new uh, and it's going to be a MIDI program again no, MIDI okay and we've got We haven't got MIDI coming in from the D5, which is interesting. So I'm going to just pop into here again, do MIDI, and find out why the D5 isn't there. It's because it can't see any of my MIDI interface. So I'm just going to have to very quickly... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to bother about doing it in MIDI. I'm just going to record it in as audio, because I can't be bothered fiddling around with it. So we're just gonna, I'm just going to play it in, sample it as an audio file. So let's get the levels up on there. Alright, and then we're just going to go you know, play the track. And then to record. That recording and there we have the file let's give it a quick name do it call it d5 strings 
and keep and then sample edit and then we just bring the front in so we get the front of that perfect so let's just zoom uh, back out on there I'm not even going to take the end off of that, I'm just going to process that and just chop the front off of it. Brilliant. Okay. So we're not even going to bother with that MIDI track there. We're going to go and create uh, another new program and we're going to create a new drum program. Uh, not mute it. And then we're going to add in program edit samples and add in d5 strings and make it so that it's one sh it's off of one shot Perfect, so we've got a one shot sample now, main, then we're going to just record that in. So as you can hear when that comes off it hasn't quite got enough length on it so it's going to adjust that a bit more Let's give it like a hundred on there yeah I'll do. so it means that when it loops around the end the tail that fades out across the front. And we're going to make it, I'll tell you what else we need to do with it as well, we need to make it um, polyphonic as well. Brilliant. Okay, fine. So that's good. Making it polyphonic just means it's going to be able to play the end, the tail end, while it's starting another um, loop round. Okay, so everything's now in the MPC. One more last little thing. If we're doing a house track, we've got to have some piano on it. So uh, we're going to put a quick piano line down onto it. Uh, I'm going to go up, sure I haven't got anything, ABL, because ABL doesn't need a note to trigger it, it just plays, so um, we don't want to ruin that, we're going to just go in to, I am however going to have to reset that because I can't play a piano line using this keyboard. Um, right, give me, two, let me just open up my audio MIDI setup and just see if it can see this interface, which it can't. So, uh, switch the power on and off to see if it picks it up. Uh, okay. <sighs> no, still not picked it up. Let's just try it again. There we go. Picked it up this time. All right. So now I need to do is to just uh, save, uh, quit, 
and then the MVC. So that's my my the the audio MIDI setup on the Mac. That's that's my setup for the studio through my, my different MIDI interfaces. You see, I've got the MX One, uh, and I've got the MPC here and the MIDI Express, which is my main audio, my main interface. So uh, let's just go and load recent hangout nine. Pop my LCD window back up so you can see it. Now we should. There we go. We've got MIDI coming back in again from there now. Brilliant. So we're going to pop up the tracks again. Uh, up to here. Create a new program. Plug in program this time. And we're going to use. Um, my favourite sampler, the where's it gone? Where's it gone? Mac five. Open that up there. So the Mac five, the Moto Mac five three. This is what this one is. Uh, it's a brilliant sampler. You 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 plays all the UVI collections of which I have quite a few. Um, if they sound amazing, they do a lot of classic synthesizers, which is which I obviously like. So they've got a lot of banks of different sounds and things like that. One of them we're going to go into now is called Di Digital Sensations. Has got uh, like the SY77, uh, D50, oh, excuse me, the um, and Sonic stuff. That's what it's for seventy seven and the M one. Now I have got the Korg M one plug in as well, but the, what they've done on here is giving you a preset called Power Piano, which just gives you an absolutely slamming version of the classic M one piano. Which means that you don't have to worry about finding the preset and then setting it up, making it stereo, because the eight um, eight foot piano on or sixteen foot piano uh, on the M1 itself was never stereo. You have to go and find a performance version of it and then set it up. And this just gives you it straight out of the box. It's amazing. So that's why I'm going to use that one. So let me go back to here, so you can see what I'm doing. So we're just going to do a little piano line. Thank you. 
let's just fix that sticky note we've got on here now. We'll auto save. So we go back to Power Piano again here and we'll just switch it to actually let's see if we've got something on the SY seventy seven that's a piano as well. Let's have a look. The only keys. I seem to remember looking at this before and finding nothing. What about the D fifty? That hasn't anything either, is it? Nineties funk note DSX. Oh dear, no. Not bad, but not. Nice for some uh, synth wave stuff, but not for a house track. Okay, let's go back to this then, and we'll just choose Power Piano again. Okay. Alright, so we've got MIDI coming in there, so let's just put this into record and we'll record that in. notes Do they need any editing doing to them there's one edit already So that'll do for us, I think, for that. It's done an hour. Brilliant. So we're going to go off now and just bounce those out. So I'm not going to do too much mixing tonight on there. Let me just bring you back here. I'm going to do too much mixing tonight uh, inside the NPC. We're going to go to take it straight and stick it into Pro Tools and uh, crack on from there for the next hour, I think. Um, I'm thinking of changing it to just doing uh, a one hour session um, and then do like 15 minute sections which is going to really time me quite a lot which could be quite a lot of fun um, but it means we'll probably get a mixed finished session every week um, and it'd be shorter which would be uh, better for the YouTube generation and the YouTube viewers out there so um, I'm thinking about doing that let me know what you think about that in the uh, in the comments down below on the video uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well while you're there um, so I'm gonna just go up to um, the all oh, mixed down should be showing you this really let's click on over to here there we go let's go into this one so we're gonna go file export audio mix down and we're going to explode the track. Actually, I haven't exploded the uh, the drum tracks yet. Let's pop back down to here. So this is my drum, the drum beat here. Um, <laughs> so we're going to just uh, come down to the track. Let's just name these tracks first. Drums. Uh, and we've got bass midi then we've got MB bass which needs to be changed to MB bass on the program name as well then we've got ABL so we've got 303 
Um, but we're going to do something different with the 303 once we've got it all arranged up. Uh, we'll show you that in a second. This, I've got the D5 strings. D5 strings. And piano. Piano and the program. Let's call it piano. Okay. Uh, oh no, I need that open. Let's have to keep that open there for you. All right. So now uh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to go way back down to track one, and we're going to explode this track. So we're going to go um, red button. And then explode. And what it's done is you can see it's muted this track. And if we go up beyond the piano, we see we have each individual sound on its own track. So that means when I when I export the song using not preferences, not preferences, using file export as audio mix down I can use explode tracks here at 24 bit 48 which is what we usually work in uh, I'll give it an audio tail of 4 seconds just in case we get that string tail in there and we're going to do export and you'll see it runs away when I do new folder with your parts 123 EPM. These are the parts that you, that you guys can get hold of uh, by signing up to the mailing list on the website, uh, mode2records.com. Get over there and uh, you can get the parts for this. I'll send the parts out for this on Friday this week. Uh, you get a load of other free stuff as well, free tracks, free mixes, free DJ mixes. Uh, there's a new DJ mix I've just done the other week um, to promote the latest track, Super JX, which is also on the YouTube channel as well, if you check that down below. Um, You'll be able to find all that on there as well. Now I'm just going to click save on here. But get on that subscribe button and then you'll be able to check out all the videos that I'm putting up. Uh, there'll be a few more equipment uh, specific things, a few more old school equipment things and a few other ideas and bits and bobs I've got floating about at the moment that I'm going to start videoing everything and sticking it on the YouTube channel. Okay, so now it's exported all those tracks. We should, if we go to let me shut down the MIDI Studio, if we go to our folder, which is here, here, and here, and in here, we should see when we get to parts 123, we've got 12 files in here, each one of those being one of these tracks. Brilliant. So I'm going to save that one last time. I'm going to quit that. I'm going to open up Pro Tools. Still on Pro Tools 11 here. Um, I still haven't found the real need yet to go to Pro Tools 12. Um, yeah. Just generally chatting now while it opens up Pro Tools. Here we go. Okay, right. So um, I'm going to create a session from template. I have a template set up there 24 bit. We're going to go bomb. We're then going to go into the folder to put it in, which is going to have the right route through my hard drive. Me. And then let's find him. Find him. There he is. Pixel Freak Hangout 9. I'm going to call it Hangout 9 PT Mix. Nice and simple. Keeping it nice and easy to understand what we like. Okay, so this is my basic template. Uh, I have two tracks. I've, uh, as you've see, probably seen before, I have a um, a boom drum machine, which I have just triggered, just the uh, kick drum trigger on there, which I use for doing compression, uh, pump compression. Uh, then I have a, a sync track which uh, is for my monotribe which I have got sitting under here 
um, which we're not going to use this week. Um, but I will one week. I will get that set up so we can actually feed the sync track into it and synchronise it along with it. For the moment, again, I'm just going to go hide and make that inactive. Take the MX1 master off of there. And now we're going to go in and do shift command and I. I'm going to split you to the other camera. Actually, what I might do. No, I'm not. I'm just going to do this one here. I wish we won't do that. I haven't got it set up so that you can see um, my hands now. Okay, let's do it this way around. Okay. If you can see that, I might make that a bit bigger. Oh, give me while I drag that window about there. Okay, we don't need to worry too much about the keyboard now. Let's try that for the moment, see how we get on with that, see how that looks. Um, okay, so I'm going to go and import the tracks into the session. So I did Shift, Command and I on the Mac. I have no idea what it is on the Windows machine because I haven't used a Windows machine for years and I certainly haven't used one for Pro Tools. Uh, let's into here. Um, but it's probably going to be uh, Shift, Control, I, I should think, on a Windows machine. Um, it's normally Control for Command. Where have I put that? There it is, right. And then Hangout 9. Parts, there we go. We're just going to highlight all of them. Copy all. Now, if you don't copy them, doesn't put them inside the uh, the session folder and if you don't move them in there you risk losing them which happened on a quite important session last year when it went off to be mixed by uh, another than uh, Mr. Chenzo Townsend um, and when he opened the track the programming was missing which is the bit that I did. So uh, fortunately, uh, a producer, a good friend of mine, uh, Julian Emery, he called me up and said, have you got those parts because we've lost them? And I did. So we sent them over and linked and relinked them. But it was just a bit worrying for a little while. 23 on the BPM. Is that right, 123? It was 123, wasn't it? Let's just check that again. Yeah, 123, okay. So, now we've got all the parts in here, you see. So... God, that sounds like a great bass line. So we call that bass. Go through and name all the tracks. Now, the 303 we're going to do slightly differently. I'm going to actually go in and perform that. Um, using an MPC as a plugin and running a, the ABL3 into it. Um, kick drum, snare drum. Hats. That's going to be off hats. So you call that off hats because they're off the beat. Claps, which we've come across obviously with that stereo panning effect that we put on there. Uh, and this must be rim shot because it can't be anything else. Which you would have also come across with there. Okay. So. You can hold down the alt key and click any one of these buttons and it will mute or solo all of them, which I, uh, Logic does as well, actually. Um, now, I'm going to shift these tracks around a bit so that they're a little bit more easier to read. So I'm going to put all the drums together. That's claps, not clasp. Claps. Rim shot goes there, and we've got bass, 303, strings, piano, perfect. 
Okay, so let's just put a little loop around there. Perfect. Okay, so let's open up the mixing window and we're just going to highlight all the drums. Let's give them a bit of colour because it's easier to see them, I find, much easier to see them when they're all coloured. So we'll have red for drums. Oh, missed the rim shot. Red for drums. Dark blue for bass. 303 can be green. Strings can be yellow. And piano can be orange. Not orange. Okay. So now I'm going to just bust all the drums together. So I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt and go to the output section and just choose a bus and it's going to send just those highlighted tracks to the bus shift command and n for new track and choose stereo auxiliary input which i'm going to call drums and then set the input of this to be the bus and now i've got <laughs> Stereo input for the drums. Overall stereo fader for them. Also, you can just command click S so that they're solo, solo safe. Um, and I'm going to bring down all these drums. Just like that. Pro Tools 11 is a bit, a bit jerky on the fader movement. Switch the click off as well. Okay, and let's just go and bring the kick drum up and we'll start doing the mixing. Get a little rough mix going first. A little bit of compression. Now, it doesn't really matter what EQ and Presser, you do this on. If you haven't got the SSL Duende strips, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. You better get more or less the same sound from whatever you use. Okay, let's give that a little bit of reverb. So I tend to use quite classic sounding, uh, quite classic boxes. I tend to use things like you see here. Um, RC24 modeling the famous lexicon, vintage drum machine, uh, vintage reverb units, SSL channel strips. That's the sort of sounds that I was trained on, so I tend to like those sounds. I know how they work. Not that I've used an SSL desk for a few years now, but the last one I think were, was at Peer Music Publishing. He's an E series desk there. But G is what I trained on, and the G is still my favourite sound. Okay, let's just sharpen that up a bit. Okay, nice bit of compression on that. Now for these, I'm just going to copy this across using the alt, alt and drag. So we've got the same sound for both the hi-hats. Bring that, fatten that up a bit there.
keeping it quite raw, so I'm just mixing it quite basically here. I want this to really pop. Overloads. So bring it up, put it down there. It's going to be quite a fat rim sound. Sound like a 909 basically, so it's coming out with a 909 to the sample of one. Okay, and then one little extra trick effects actually on the bus itself. And I'm going to use a drum strip. This is just a, uh, um, a collection of, of like EQ, uh, compressors, transient shapers, all that kind of stuff. Bring that down a bit there. with the transient shaper. Do. Got a bit of compression and then mix it in with that. And this is the little fellow, this is the big this is the mother of all EQs. Mount up to there. I've never heard anything that can do that to a bass drum. It's incredible. I'm going to use the gate this week because I want to just keep it quite a clean sound. Quite a natural sound. Okay, got the headroom still left in there. Drive it a bit harder. Okay, here we go. Just mixed in a mix down with the track. This is just joining us. Now what we're going to try is just putting on a normal uh, Pro Tools compressor here and I've got a preset that's called Old Pump and this is a, obviously a pumping preset. Now I've got my boom drum machine kick trigger set up on bus 13 left. Change the tap and release to move it. Okay. Let's just pop a 
a reverb on the strings here. Good. And then a bit of EQ. Yeah, nice. Okay. And a bit, just a tiny bit of compression just to reel it in a bit. Copy that. But we don't want any of that compression on it. Just a bit. Now for this one, we're going to put a bit of delay on there. We're going to use replica. a bit Okay, so that's a basic mix. That will do for the moment. Um, so let's go ahead and just do an arrangement now. So trim off these regions here. Now, now I'm using Pro Tools here for this. It doesn't really matter what you use. The principles are the same. Really, you just you have a mixer and you have the the arrange window here. Um, now I always start by arranging from around about bar 17. Just because it gives you a bit of um, bit of space at the front, so I always have the like all the parts that I'm going to be using at the front here, uh, and then I'm going to have um, starting over here is, is where the arrangement runs from. So we're just going to copy across a whole lot of kick triggers for the moment. Let's zoom out so you can see that going on there. Let's do I don't know. five and a half minutes or so of kick triggers and obviously we're going to drop these in and out because you can control the compression from whether you have bass drums playing or not which is why it's better to do it from a separate kick drum track than it is from doing it from the kick drum you've got playing in your song um, now I'm going to start off by with just a kick drum let's put the song marker here oh, it's heavy with that bass on it 
Okay. Um, and then we're going to put in our hats. Coming on the second time round. Now you might think it's a bit sparse to start with. Actually, I'm going to start off doing eight bars. I think these are four bar loops, aren't they? Oop. So I'm just using the duplicate command here. Um, you can do the same thing in Logic. Um, you can set it up to duplicate parts. Uh, you can set them to copy numbers as well. Uh, command K, I think, copies numbers. I'm just using it in Pro Tools here just to copy the regions across. Um, and then maybe we'll have the collapse. Do, I'm just going to bring the grid down to um, four uh, quarter notes or crotchets if you're old school music. Just to take a kick drum out. Actually, not there. Here. Just before the snare comes in. We could actually, I'll tell you what we could do. We could use the old, the age old trick of undoing that. Let's trim that or mark that there. Um, and you can do this in Logic as well in the audio edit window. Um, in Pro Tools, it's really, really simple. You just hit that. reverse the kick drum and make that thing again there and need something else to come in here Flip that again there, and one more time. So to bring in different things here and here, I've need to bring some music in really. So we're going to bring in bass line coming in here. So this time we're going to just pull out the bass drum there. We go from the start of this time for this this cycle. And we're going to do a little drum roll into that. But I'm going to just chop it in in Pro Tools here. Okay, so I need it to be there. I'm going to put it in like that. And then in there like that. And then I'm going to just chop it in half again. I'm just using the keys of uh, Control, Alt, and then plus and minus on the keypad on my keyboard just to change the... the um, Grid size, you can see it changing behind. Let's just move that to there. That's 
there, let's try that again. Perfect, that'll do. So, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna just going to select all of that there, and I'm going to do Control Alt Number Three, and it remakes the region for me, but it rebuilds it with that with that little roll at the end there. Which is one of the reasons why I like using Pro Tools because it's so fast for doing audio editing and things like that. Okay, so here I'm just going to duplicate this track just by right clicking the track name and pressing duplicate. We're going to do yeah, active playlists, automation, insert, sends. Haven't got any, haven't got any insert after last track yet. Okay, so we're going to make a copy of this track here. Take everything out apart from over this little gap we're going to create here, a little break we're going to have here. Now the reason why I'm doing that is what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in a single one band EQ. Just a standard straightforward Pro Tools one band EQ. Put it on a on a bass cut so that when it gets to this end. Copy this across here. Take that out and put the claps back in. And think that round again. this here, make sure we're getting this right here. You can hear immediately how that, that just that little compressor just bouncing off the kick drum of uh, that trigger track. So take the trigger out over the gap here, really kicks it back in. Right in there. Bring some strings. 
strings in there. And we're going to filter it up, so we're going to put a little filter on here. Okay, so we're going to now add in the piano. It's going to come in here. This filter on here, so I'm going to put the filter. Just uh, what we're going to put on, we're going to put on a all right. Let's try an air vintage filter. the right level that'll do okay and then to automate this in Pro Tools you have to just click the little automation button at the top there add what you want to automate to the list so automation button is just there you can see that like that so there's like two boxes on top of each other Right there, I don't know if that's actually doing that on there or not, whether you can see that or not. But anyway, um, that's what is doing that. Now I can go over to here and flick this to vintage filter cutoff. I'm going to very slowly raise this filter up. Like that. In fact, well, less slowly than that, so like that.
Okay. Let's see how this drops in here. Back to waveform. having these two plays, three playing here. actually. Let's just keep that in there. So from here what we can do with this is again with that grid I'm going to just separate these snare drums put one at the front and then just copy them across put the loop around this section And just copy them across to program like a drum roll. And then make it even tighter Whoop. by just changing the grid down again, highlighting this, and just doing that. like that and then what we're going to do is do that shift uh, so we can shift alt 3 make it into a new region and then I'm going to highlight just off just one little beat off the front up to about there do command F for a fade and tell it to do a standard fade on it and it will do that for me Perfect. No need to do any automation stuff or anything like that. We'll join those two together again with another Shift command, uh, Shift Alt three, and then probably just take this third one and copy it across the front because they're a bit quiet at the front. So then again, we we'll just do Shift Alt three. And I'm just jumping in out of that big view with the E key, the edit key in Pro Tools. Okay, so now we're going to go.
maybe that front bit's a bit too much. Just trim it off there. over here again bits duplicate and we just put those uh, hand claps in it again like that and then just do baseline drums and then start doing a, a build out so just keep duplicating this bit here that bit there again and then just keep taking bits out of it is how I tend to do it and then that bit there Okay, so that's our arrangement of the track. What we've got to do is one last thing, which is the 303. Now what I do with the 303, let's just knock those out there as well, to know where the start is. Give that a quick save. So really quickly, we've got 10 minutes before the end, so what I'm going to do, now obviously I haven't used the 303 track that I've bounced out. And there's a reason for that because I don't really want to use that one track because um, let's put it back here because it's uh, I don't really want to use that one track because it's only a four bar loop of a 303 and with 303 you want to be able to open the filters and and change it and make it move as it goes through the track so I'm gonna um, scrap that it's gonna hide and make it inactive on on the screen there let me show you that. So I've just hidden, made that track inactive here. Um, just by right clicking it and do hide and make it inactive. Um, now I'm going to insert to make sure I've saved it because sometimes it can go a bit haywire. 
doing this, you're going to insert an instrument track this time. So Shift, Command, and N for new track, and you're going to insert instrument track. Now, when I go down to my multi-channel plugins on instrument, I've got MPC. So you see, if you look at this screen here, uh, see if you see this here, my MPC has now come back to life again here. Um, so I can actually go into File, Load Recent, and then Hangout 9. And then what I'm going to do I'm going to mute actually I'm just going to solo a three oh three track. Now that means that when I play it's playing the three oh three for me. Now you can see already it's automatically mapped the Q links for me. So it's already got those on there, so I can make sure I know which ones I'm using. Then when I press play, I can play it basically and play the 303 through through the MPC, which is um, amazing, um, really really clever. So I've just made another new audio track there because I'm just going to record it. I'm not going to I'm not going to record automation or anything like that at all. I just want to record it like a, as a as a as a performance. Um, so I'm going to tell it to record from a bus. I'm going to tell it to record from bus 40 because it's right near the end. I'm not like to put anything in there, and I'm going to tell the instrument track output to go to bus 40. So I'm just bouncing it like I would do in a normal mixing desk. Um, just taking the output of the instrument track here, which I'm going to name MPC, and I'm just recording it into PC Audio track for MPC Audio. So I put this into record here, and I press play. You see the level start to bounce because it's recording the 303 playing from the MPC. So I'm using the MPC like a um, just like an instrument, really. It's, it's controlling the 303 for me. So these these Q links are now the 303 knobs on the front, but the whole thing is synchronised into um, the master clock from Pro Tools, which is a, a, a fantastic system. Um, to have and a fantastic way of doing it. So what I'm going to do now is stand up for this bit because I'd like to when I'm playing I'm going to stand up. I'm going to just put you into uh, this view so you can see what my things are doing on the Q-Links. See the lights and now we're just going to record and it's just going to record it as a straightforward audio track for me. Um, so I'm going to press the record key on Pro Tools and we're just going to record it and we'll see what happens. So, I'm going to just bring down the filter and just play it very quickly. So, everything's kind of down and reset. So, I'm going to start it there. Alright, so I'm going to press record now. Here we go.
so there we go that's how I put the 303 into the, into the machine and why I didn't um, arrange it with the system before um, so yeah nice not a bad little tune got quite a long way with that one tonight um, not quite sure how if I change it to an hour I'll be able to fit that in as well but uh, yeah that's uh, that's pretty cool I'm pretty pleased with that obviously we just need to uh, just apply some effects to the MP uh, to the to the 303 sound um, and uh, probably just put a, a delay or something on it just a little delay or something in the background and uh, yeah pretty cool so that's it for this evening's uh, hangout hope you enjoyed that um, don't forget subscribe to the channel hit those buttons below subscribe to the channel uh, share the channel and do all the all the usual social bits and pieces but subscribe to that channel It'll be great to have you on board get yourselves over to mo2records.com get yourself on the mailing list and get the parts for this track I'm probably even gonna just finish mixing this track as well and uh, maybe you can get that over to as well but anyway you'll never know if you don't get over to the website and sign up so make sure you're on that main list make sure you subscribe to the uh, to the channel so you pick up all the videos we're going to be putting up in the next uh, next few weeks and next few months and next few years hopefully so um, hopefully you enjoyed that come back and see us again next week I'll see you soon <laughs>